This is the High School Crossfire. Welcome back. Greetings. I am Ange Rachel from Team Negative, St. Joseph's SS Nagalama. There is no future without addressing climate change, and forests are a key component to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement, says the UN. You know, they asked if those who get to reprimand the UN if they don't do their duty, we as the United Nations Forum on Forest are just a subsection of a bigger body. So the bigger body can actually come after us if we fail, but we don't intend to fail. Don't get that, don't mistake us. Now, that being said, speaker. Yes. How are you feeling? I'm all right. She's fine. Do governments view forests as essential? Yes. Is that why they allow acres of forested land to be raised down by industries they and do agriculture? Not allow it. Is that why they allow? They do not allow it. Yes or no? That is a fallacy. Yes they or no? Okay, it. unanswered. Cool. So, are all entities across the supply chain capable of enforcing protections of forests? Pardon? The supply chains you are blaming, the company supply chains you are blaming, yes. are all entities across them capable of enforcing protection of forests? Yes. Mm. So consider those are the, concept the consumption stage of this supply chain. Do they know what they are buying is a product of illegal deforestation? Yes. Oh. So does that necessitate blaming of companies? Yes. Dear speaker, you may take your seat. Ladies and gentlemen, clearly we cannot longer trust governments to enforce legal and financial repercussions on the offenders. And this, yes, they say that we are blaming companies. It is okay, we agree with them. But we are saying that we cannot ignore the bigger picture. You want to, we, we don't want to allow companies to go on deforestating. What we want to do is to actually blame the people that allow these companies to go on with their activities. And who are we looking at? The government. Time and time again, we have received reports of government giving out forested land in the, right now, Currently, we had Al Jazeera reports that government gives away the government gave away Bugoma Forest Reserve to Hoima Sugar Factory, claiming that the nine miles, square miles of land that they gave was just grassland. And this is the same government you want to entrust to punish companies, companies that they are condoning, really? You want to feed the cancer, you don't want to cure it. Ladies and gentlemen, the government's laxity is giving way to destruction of forests, which is why when we put pressure on the right players, we will see positive results. Look at Canada. Canada is a developed country. Well, our parameter is the world. Canada, the, the province of British Columbia, is championing sustainable forestry. They are a global leader in sustainable forest management, meeting the environmental and social economic needs of the current and future generations, according to Forestry for the Future. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what happens when the government plays its role in the conservation of the environment and forests. We cannot keep blaming companies and ignoring the government's follies. Ladies and gentlemen, she says that all entities across the supply chain are capable of enforcing protection of forests, which is not true. The supply chain is wide. It goes from the primary stage. We have lumberers, mining companies, all those people. We have the secondary stage suppliers, people who actually process this timber, this wood, we have the tertiary stage, consumers, who include schools, hotels, all those people. Now, she, I asked her to consider that consumption stage, you know, and I asked her if she knows what they're buying is illegal, and she said yes. Are we really going to trust people who come and give us factual errors? Do you know, what if the shirt you are wearing is from a tree that was cut down illegally? How would you know? How would you know? And then I asked her if that necessitates blaming of companies, of which she agreed. You, in fact, I just, in fact, we see clashes within their argument. Therefore, we continue to defend our argument that companies should actually be blamed for their laxity and not the companies. Sorry, governments should be blamed for their laxity, not the companies. Thank you very much. Speaker. Is public inclusivity important in any government program? It depends. Can the same process produce different results when done in the same way consecutively? It depends on the process. Okay. Is government, is forest conservation a priority of the UN? It depends on the body. Would anyone love to leave their comfortable zone? It depends on why. Will your UN give your policy priority? I beg your pardon? Will the UN give your policy priority? 
It depends on when. Okay. It depends. Is climate change a matter of urgency of, or, or an emergency? It depends on why. Has the UN been in place? Obviously. Has it been trying to curb the problem of deforestation? It depends on how they did it. Has it been successful yet? It depends on how you look Has at it. Has Uganda as a country been doing anything to curb deforestation? It depends on how you see it. Okay. Did your first speaker show us how you plan on solving the problem? It depends on what you are listening to. And how was that? Repeat your question. Okay. Is setting up a factory part of the supply chain? It depends on why. Okay. Is this a value or policy resolution from your understanding of the negative side? How is that relevant? Did your third speaker say you hold sanctions and fines? It depends on what you had. Isn't that accountability? You didn't understand. Okay. So, the fact that we are getting answers like it depends and it depends and it depends, we don't know how long that is going to depend. But before I go into further into deeper into our reply speech, I'll first have to inform you that one, these people came here, the first speaker didn't accept any POIs, the second speaker also didn't accept any POIs. Secondly, if I go and ask them, I ask them that, would anyone want to leave their comfortable zone? Guess what they told me? It depends. So if we look at it in this way, we look at, we, on our side of the house, we are creating an uncomfortable position for these companies that are indulging in deforestation. They ask, we, when we ask them that, um, would anyone want to leave their comfort zone, they tell us that it depends. But then we tell you that we are creating an uncomfortable position for these companies. While on their side of the house, they are saying that, you see, we don't even know what they are going to do. We ask them what policy that it was, and they tell us that it depends. We ask them how, whether this was a value or policy resolution, they did not clearly necessarily state that. But in a, a policy in a policy resolution panel, we have to answer three major questions necessary for this debate. One is how we are going to implement what is being said in the debate. Two, why we are going to do it. And three, how that is going to in the end solve the problem. One, when I begin with the first why, we ask them like, like in the first why, why shouldn't we hold these companies accountable? They come and give us things that are not even clear to them because they also say it depends. But then on our side of the house, we tell you that we see why we are going to hold these companies accountable is because they are partially responsible. From their supply chain, they necessitate deforestation, they necessitate all this, right? And then the second why, how, we also tell you all the, of all the policies that we are going to give, but what do they give us? Clearly nothing. How that is going to solve the problem? My third speaker came and told you that you see, when we do all this, when we hold when we hold these companies accountable, we are going to eliminate them from the top of the chain, right? We are going to eliminate their supply chain from the top of the chain. And when you eliminate the top, the whole chain goes down. Secondly, we tell them that we are comparing, um, that they ask us the relevance of uh, LDCs and why they're necessary in this state. We come and tell you that why we are using Uganda as a body is because Uganda is largely dependent on agriculture, one. So it is going to have an incentive to want to curb deforestation. We come and ask them, has the UN been in place? They say it, it, it obviously yes. Has it been trying to solve the problem? They say it depends. And then when I ask them how successful has it been, obviously the answer is still vague. On our side of the house, we obviously should show you that Uganda as a country, why it, it has been trying to do things, right? It has banned already companies. It has been it, banning licenses of companies that have been uh, involving in deforestation. But what has the, the UN done? Nothing. And then we ask them, is uh, UN, is forest conservation a priority of the UN? They say it depends. But then what do we tell them? We tell them that the UN cannot get involved in the domestic matters of any country. So it does not have any incentive to come and spearhead their policy. So a policy that has nobody is obviously a policy that cannot succeed. Compared to our side of the house, we deserve to win this debate. I rest my case. <laughs> Debaters, thank you for the good and spirited rounds of debate. I welcome all of you to the big leagues right now. I'm sure the audience has been wowed by the quality of submissions, and so have the judges. I thank you all. I will delve into my substantive points of review of the debate. For fear of overgeneralization of fact, I would like to draw you to some of the strongest clashes in the debate. Number one, the parameter clash. Now, debaters, we all know that it is very sacrilegious to engage in a parameter debate, pulling groups across the entire debate, uh, debating and almost being out of the scope. Now, Team Affirmative's case in justifying why Uganda should be their parameter was more of need-based. I mean, a country, but they are depending on 88% on forest cover, and our resolution is majorly based on deforestation. And they told you that Uganda is a low developing country, which might not be able to afford some of the more expensive approaches to 
combating climate change. So they gave you sustainable approaches. Team Negative's argument, on the other hand, was that the effects of global warming and climate change far exceed the effects that we see in an individual country. In fact, the second farmer came here, second negator came here and told you that if something that is against climate change happens in Uganda, it will not affect Uganda alone. Now, of that nuance, I gave a slight inclination to team negative on that purpose. The reason I did not punish team affirmative more was this. In this whole parameter, even if you debate the world, Uganda is in the world. And therefore, you had an onus to rebut most of their presumptions. Based off that fact, I gave a slight inclination to you, but it, did, it is not what is the final ratio DCDND. Now, with regards to number one, the burden of proof, and number two, coming up with a foolproof policy debate, I clearly found both sides wanting respectively. I will begin with team affirmative. Team affirmative, in your case, you come here and in the first speech, the first speaker was very, very detailed in giving us a policy, in giving us a work plan. But forget not that the onus and the burden of proof rests solely with team affirmative. The strongest points you had to come here and justify actually was why we should put the burden on companies. Now, based off what your fourth speaker said, the fourth speaker said we are burdening companies because they are partially responsible. Do you hear the word partially responsible? Who takes the other part? That is my first question. Next up, when the other team then comes and tells you that, you know what, we want to place the onus on government, I expect a cost-benefit analysis from Affirmative 2 to come here and tell me that if we are to blame government, these are the merits and demerits. If we are to blame companies, these are the merits and demerits. Come and give us an argument and say if we task companies to do this, we are potentially shielding the taxpayer from bearing the individual costs that the companies have put on us, on ourselves. In other words, come and justify to us, give us a way, a clear weighing of in Team Negative's world, where companies, where governments are responsible solely even in their argument, here is what would be wrong. And this is the reason companies should then bear the responsibility. It is not enough for you to give us a generic argument of it is because they are partially responsible and they cut down trees. No. Break it down for us. Tell us that who profits most? In the sector of forestry, look at these companies. Are most of them international conglomerates? Meaning most of our money is even going outwards. Yeah, thank you so much. To begin with, I want to begin by appreciating both teams, uh, both team affirmative and team negative. This is what we mean by quarterfinals at high school crossfire, the quality of debate, the quality of submissions, the ability to understand your speaker roles, the arguments, the policies brought forward, the houses brought forward. Big up to you. I really appreciate credit to the first speakers, the first speaker from team affirmative, the first speaker from team negative, and the third speaker from team affirmative. You understood the, sorry, you were able to understand the roles, and then literally you understood the assignment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what did we have in today's debate? In today's debate, we have a debate that has one, a clash point on parameters. We have a team affirmative that is looking at parameters to with Uganda. We have a team negative that is looking at parameters to do as the entire world. However, irrespective of the parameters, as the previous judge talked about, the guests in today's debate were looking at which body should be or which body should suffer the legal and the financial accountability part of it. Yes, I like the fact that Team Affirmative was able to bring parameters that you defended, and even when Team Negative came and you crushed the parameters they gave you, are able to also justify why you don't consider their parameters, which is very good. We also had a resolution, or we had a debate that was looking at clash point on definitions, for example, the definition of a company, which are both right. Yes, they had their definition according to the dictionary, you had your definition according to the Companies Act of 2012, which defines a company as more of an individual person that has the capability of being sued and suing, which are both very right. Now, the guest now went to the issue of who is going to be blamed at the end of the day. 
we had a team negative that was looking at holding the companies responsible. And then we had a team negative that was looking at holding the government responsible. Team negative, team affirmative says we are going to hold the companies liable because it is these very companies that are necessitating deforestation to take place. Then we have a team negative says no, we should hold the government liable because it is the government that is failing in the implementation and the possibility of its role. Now, where did they go? Or oh, personally, where I based now this judgment unto was in the closing speeches. Number one, to the negator four. Sorry. Yes, negator four. The essence of cross-examination, that's why they call them close-ended questions that require a yes or a no. Truth be told, if we were in the courts of law and you were a witness and you were being cross-examined and that is the way you were responding, you will be referred to as a hostile witness. So it depends on what at the end of the day. On what they are understanding, on what you are debating. Truth be told, you were asked questions. Which question had you answered very well? They were actually going to create more weight to your case. But to me, failure to answer the questions that you refer to as depends. It depends. You failed your own case deliberately. And that's why I based my judgment on the closing speeches. I'll try as much as possible to avoid repeating what the previous judges have said. On the issue of parameters, Team Affirmative, you gave us Uganda as your parameter. Team Negative, you gave us the whole world as your parameter. And personally, I felt the justification Team Affirmative gave me for Uganda, you said you gave us the 88% dependence on the wood fuel and the fact that Uganda in itself may not have the resources to foster other sources of energy. Personally, I felt that was not convincing enough. But similarly, I felt you were able to point out the inconsistency in their parameter, which was the fact that much as global warming is actually a global issue, different countries may not have the full capacity to implement the same measures to combat global warming altogether. Much as we may want to implement the same measures, different countries have different capacities to actually implement all this. Are we together? So on the issue of parameter, I felt both of you slightly came short, so I did not penalize any of you. Now, I'll address myself to what I picked out as the main arguments on which I personally based my argument, my judgment. The fourth negative. You came and asked good questions and gave a very nice speech, and then when it was your turn to answer the questions, you did not answer even a single question. You kept saying, it depends. So if you tell me as a judge, it depends, am I supposed to credit you, Max, for that? It depends on what? Are we together? I did not really appreciate that. More so after the fact that you had come and asked good questions and given a nice speech, and then now you came and failed to do your case justice. Personally, I felt there was that fine margin of where you came short as team negative. Uh, thank you so much. I would like to appreciate both teams. I must say this is the standard of high school crossfire. Both teams, uh, according to their presentation, I feel they have done great research. But now when we talk about debate, right from the definition of debate, yes, you have to really convince the house that you are the best. Now, when we look at the resolution that talks about these companies should be held legally and financially accountable for deforestation caused by their supply chain. Uh, my colleagues have talked a lot about that and they have tried to dissect to you what it means. But for me, as a teacher of English right now, I would like to judge you on the following areas. One, how you, your speaker roles. Two, how you interpreted the resolution. Now, the affirmers, you have a burden of proof. A burden of proof. And when you, if you are, you, 
we were supposed to convince the House beyond reasonable doubt, giving us statistics, statistics, sources of information where you you get what you are saying. But that one was really lacking to me also so much. And also, these companies that you are talking about, how are they held legally and financially accountable? You should have weighed that debate and convinced us. But I, didn't, I was not so much convinced, though uh, I see a level of research and the skills of debate is now coming up that I appreciate both teams for. But I would also want to comment that you need to take the debate as a debate, not personal, or be offended. Then when we come to cross-examination, we need to respond to what we ask, not just ask for fun, and also be good time managers. Now, this was a very, very good debate. And it being the starter of the debates today, I commend all of you for the great debate you've given us today. I'm going to begin with the fourth speaker, Team Negative. Next time, please answer the questions. Because at the end of the day, you read, um, at the end of the day, you ended up, ex should I say, showing your team members as if they had done nothing. Because they were asking you questions that your team members had already established and you were saying it depends. Like that is so critical and so crucial. I feel like next time, if it is there, do better. Team Affirmative, I commend you first, Affirma. You gave a very beautiful speech from and I commend you for your work plan. You gave a very good work plan. You systematically showed how you're going to actually be able to do what? To hold these countries liable, to hold these companies liable. Uh, one thing I would credit you for is Team Affirmative fourth speaker asked Team Negative, how are you from the third negator to the fourth? How are you going, how, who will be able to hold your house accountable in case of failure? I remember you mentioned something about the Paris Treaty and ended up connecting it to the United Nations. But as the previous judges have said, because they asked you, will the United Nations be able to prioritize environmental conservation or afforestation? Will it be able to prioritize that in in um, comparing it to wars, to other things. And you answered, it depends. I faulted you on that. Then, I credit Team Affirmative for what they showed. Um, you gave good content. You showed us that at the end of the day, the government has actually tried to do something in revoking the licenses of 40 companies. Now, Team Affirmative fourth speaker, you said partially companies will be held like companies are contributing partially to this. Then, um, Team Affirmative, from the first speaker to the second speaker, you mentioned that Uganda is too poor to afford sustainable energy. So. At the end of the day, I was asking myself, if it is too poor to afford sustainable energy, then how will it be able to go about it? So style, I gave team affirmative 18 and team negative 15 because of the fourth speaker. Content, I gave team affirmative 26 and team negative 26. I appreciate you for your content. You all had content. Even after team negative set their parameter as the entire world, they gave various examples. And you also stuck to your parameter of what? Of Uganda and you gave examples only in Uganda. Now, for strategy is where I differed. I gave team affirmative 26 and I differed on strategy and style. And I gave team negative 30 totaling up to 70 for team negative and 71, sorry, totaling up to 70 for team affirmative 
and 71 for team negative. And it is on these grounds, it is not a unanimous decision. It's a decision of three to two that team negative takes the day.